what happened. When the shot started flying and former President Trump grabbed his right ear, it was Mr. Trump himself who stated a short time later that he had been hit by a bullet. This afternoon here on Capitol Hill, FBI Director Christopher Wray said authorities haven't determined what struck ex-President Trump. There's, it, there's some question about whether or not uh, it's a bullet or shrapnel that, you know, that hit his ear. So it's, it's conceivable, although as I sit here right now, I don't know whether that bullet in addition to, you know, causing the grazing, could have also landed somewhere else. A suspect is directly above us. That was FBI Director Christopher Wray testifying before Congress yesterday about the shooting in Butler, Pennsylvania at the Trump rally. You heard what he said right there. He said, as of right now, we don't know whether or not it was a bullet that grazed Trump's ear or whether it was metal fragments or shrapnel. You'll recall that uh, officers who were around Donald Trump who were injured were not injured by the bullets, but they were injured by shrapnel. Normally, we would get a medical report from a treating physician, in this case, Butler Memorial Hospital were the treating physicians, but Donald Trump did not release those medical records the way leaders of political parties who are running for the highest office in our land have always done before. Instead, MAGA Republican Congress member Ronnie Jackson, who's an unlicensed physician right now, who is known for turning the White House into a pill mill. They called Ronnie Jackson the candy man, and the White House under him was known for dispensing very freely Versed, which is the date rape drug, uh, ketamine, fentanyl patches, uh, uh, provi provigil, you know, and lots of other very serious drugs. The Department of Defense Inspector General's report called out the behavior um, of the uh, team involved for dispensing out those medical, uh, the, those pills in the White House. But th that's Ronnie Jackson, an extreme MAGA Republican. He was demoted from his job as well, alleged for allegations of harassment and for him um, engaging in lots of misbehavior and being under the influence um, while he was working. Um, but let's just take a look at some of the updated information from FBI Director Christopher Wray. There, there are some updates that we have. I mean, one of the things is the Google search of the shooter. Let's listen to where FBI Director Christopher Wray talked about that. Play the clip. From our review, to your point about devices, uh, analysis of a laptop that the investigation ties to the shooter uh, reveals that on July 6th, he did a Google search for, quote, how far away was Oswald from Kennedy? Um, and so that's a search that obviously is significant in terms of his state of mind. Um, we, that is the same day that it appears that he registered for the Butler rally. Is there any evidence at all that he may have been in contact with somebody else before this occurred that may have had any prior knowledge or may have helped him plan this event? Well, needless to say, that, that is a question that we're intensely focused on because that would obviously be incredibly meaningful. So far, underline, so far, we have not found any evidence uh, of any accomplices or co-conspirators, uh, foreign or domestic. And you're using geolocation data to see if his cell phone was near another cell phone, I presume? Right. We're doing lots of different kinds of cellular analysis, uh, geolocation stuff, looking at his accounts. Uh, he, he, from everything we've seen, um, which is consistent with what we've learned in interviews, you know, a lot of people describe him as a loner. That does kind of fit with what we're seeing in his devices, you know, his, his list of contacts, for example, uh, is very short, you know, compared to what you would normally see from, from most people. So it doesn't appear to be a whole lot of interaction between him, uh, you know, face to face or digital with a lot of people. Okay. Thank you. That doesn't mean there's not any, and that's why we're drilling into, we're trying to talk to anybody who's had any engagement with him whatsoever, digital, you know, in person, classmates, coworkers, right. et cetera. Appreciate that. Another new piece of information is that the shooter may have been flying a drone um, in the area before the shooting. Here, play this clip where Christopher Ray talks about that. Tell me about the drone. You, you, you act like you wanted to fill us in on that. Fill us in. 
So uh, we have recovered a drone uh, that the shooter uh, appears to have used. Uh, it's being exploited and analyzed by the FBI lab. Uh, the drone was recovered uh, in his vehicle. So at the time of the shooting, the drone was in his vehicle uh, with the controller. Uh, in addition, our investigation has uncovered do you know what time of day he flew it, and if he flew it on the day of the shot? Yeah. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. So in addition, it appears that around uh, 3.50 p.m., 4 o'clock in that window, uh, on the day of the shooting, uh, that the shooter was flying the drone around uh, the area. Uh, Two hours. About 11 minutes. I want to be clear, but when I say the area, not over the, the stage and that part of the area itself, but I would say about 200 yards, give or take away okay. from that. We, we think, but we do not know. So again, this is one of these things that's qualified because of our ongoing review that he was live streaming, you know, viewing the footage from that again, about 11 minutes in around the 3.50, 4 o'clock PM range. Two hours before he's flying a drone in the, in the vicinity of, of the yeah, route. About 200 yards away. Yes. 200 yards. Okay, that's, that's important information. Look, there are undisputed facts about the shooter. We know he was a white male, 20 years old. We know that he was a registered Republican from Pennsylvania. He voted in the Republican closed primaries in 2022. We know from people who knew him that he had right-wing views. We know that he wore Second Amendment kind of... The, Fe uh, paraphernalia fetishizing the Second Amendment. Um, you know, he was a gun nut, not someone who was for responsible gun ownership. Um, um, and we know that his family had MAGA flags and Trump flags uh, in their property. At least that's what um, neighbors reported. So those are some of the kind of undisputed facts about it. We also know that uh, his family was part of a Trump campaign database where they were targeted with information from the Trump campaign in 2016. Trump campaign kept a database of uh, of gun owners and gave them rankings about how much they could be influenced based on certain type of propaganda that was being uh, fed to them. Um, so those are some of the undisputed facts that we know now. Um, as part of this hearing, again, we're, we were trying to get at the data, the details, the information about the shooting, though. MAGA Republicans, Trump allies, um, like Congresswoman Spars, for example, a MAGA Republican, used the opportunity to try to attack Christopher Wray, who was just trying to give the information and the data from the FBI's investigation and what they've learned thus far. And she accused them of all of these like January 6 conspiracies that the FBI was in on it. Here, play the clip. Are we looking at that? Any one conclusion was made from that? Have we made any adjustments? Because I know a lot of people, you know, got hurt now just being here. It was a lot of cases burning up the Department of Justice. And there were, a lot of them were really just law-abiding Americans that really just upset with the government and they have a reason to do it. So I think we need to think about it before we prosecute or instead of actually, you know, looking how we can deal with real criminals and how we can have a proper security when we have events with so many people there. So did you, uh, did you have confidential human sources? I think you never answered that question on January 6th in the Capitol. Did you have some? I'm sorry, what's the, what's Confid the question? Confidential human sources. Did you have them on January 6th in the Capitol? Well, uh, again, I, I'm never going to be getting into when and where we okay. have or have willing? not or have not used confidential human sources. But Are you willing to stand the record that you had, you know, you had no confidential human sources that went into Capitol on January 6th? As I've said consistently, I'm not going to get into where we have or have not used confidential human sources. I can tell you that if you are asking if the violence at the Capitol on January 6th was part of some operation orchestrated by FBI no, sources or agents, the answer is no. No, I didn't ask you that. I asked you, so did you investigate if you, any confidential human sources? Did you do any investigation and looking at that? So you're not answering if you had any or not. So if you had potentially, did you do anything you needed to make sure to investigate that none of your sources did anything wrong? If they did wrong, they, they were prosecuted the same way, like you're trying to prosecute a lot of people that really even in Supreme Court rule recently that some on some unconstitutional charges. 
Let me just add that there have now been, I think, 180 individuals who've gone to trial, in addition to the 850 well, who've, who've pled guilty. Right, but I think the uh, problem and, is you put and, these and charges, me, a lot of people yeah, would plead guilty. But uh, let me say just quickly, because I only have 10 seconds, really. So I hope you will take seriously what you're doing. You know, really just to be clear about Christopher Ray's background now. Christopher Ray is a Republican. He was a lifelong Republican. He was appointed by Donald Trump. But Donald Trump and all of the MAGA Republicans constantly attack Christopher Ray. And uh, Christopher Ray was attacked by Donald Trump on social media earlier uh, in the day. Um, here's what Donald Trump had to say about Christopher Ray on his social media. He said, I watched the congressional hearing today as Christopher Ray was asked the question whether or not he noticed any cognitive degeneration in his many conversations with crooked Joe Biden. And despite the fact that special counsel Robert Hurst said effectively that Joe Biden is incompetent with little memory, Ray said that is not something I observed during my interactions with him, which were uneventful and unremarkable, essentially stating he found nothing wrong mentally or physically with Joe. If that is the case, Director Ray should resign immediately from the FBI and stop sweet-talking Congress every time he goes up, which he loves to do, because anybody can see that blah, 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 blah. And then Donald Trump goes, Ray has to resign now for lying to Congress. Um, Mr. Ray from the Twitter files, Missouri versus Biden disclosures, the Durham investigation and report and exposure and collapse of the Russian collusion hoax. The American people fully understand that there is a two tier justice system that has been weaponized to persecute people based on their political beliefs and that you have personally been weapon that you have personally worked to weaponize the FBI against conservatives. I asked Mr. Durham about this, to which he answered, I don't think that things can go too much further with the view that law enforcement, particularly the FBI or Department of Justice, runs a two-tiered system of justice. The nation can't stand under those circumstances. Director Ray, what are you prepared to do to reform federal law enforcement in a manner which earns back the trust of the American people? Well, first off, I would disagree with your characterization of the FBI and certainly your description of my own approach. Uh, the idea that I'm biased against conservatives uh, seems somewhat insane to me, uh, given my own personal background. As to how we are approaching our work of protecting the American people and upholding the Constitution, it starts with me having emphasized to all of our folks over and over and over again in everything we do that we need to do the right thing in the right way, and that means following the facts wherever they lead, no matter who likes it. And that's the MAGA Republicans constantly going after Christopher Ray like that over and over again. Um, and look, we're just trying to get at the data here, folks. We're just trying to get at the facts, especially where Donald Trump's out there selling $299 assassination edition sneakers. Trump's trying to profit off of this, he's trying to make money off of it. Look at these ugly sneakers that he's selling. Um, he says he's going to autograph 10 of them. I mean, this is unhinged, just completely uh, horrific behavior. Um, but we'll get, we'll keep you updated every step of the way here, but that's the latest uh, update from the congressional hearing with Christopher Wright. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. Thanks for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.